Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Jacksonville History Show. I'm Harry Reagan. Tonight, we take you back 50 years to a violent chapter in Jacksonville history, Axe Handle Saturday. African Americans were demonstrating with sit-ins trying to be served at lunch counters in downtown stores. A crowd of white men with axe handles and baseball bats attacked them. 50 people were injured and 62 arrested. Our guests were there that day. Nat Glover, former sheriff of Jacksonville, now interim president of Edward Waters College, and Rodney Hurst, civil rights leader and author of It Was Never About a Hot Dog and a Coke. Welcome, both of you. Thank you, Harry. Glad to be here, Harry. Rodney, you were one of the uh, organizers of the sit-in, right? I was president of the Youth Council in ACP, and for each sit-in, we had captains. Mm -hmm. We had assigned captains for each of the sit-ins uh, starting August 13th. And the reason we had captains is that we only wanted um, one or two persons to talk to the media. We didn't want 50, 60 different explanations about different things. Mm -hmm. So uh, we had uh, captains, and I was, in, in addition to being president, I was one of the captains of the sit in You were not hurt? No, in, no. But people were hurt? Yes, yes. Um, the, when we made the conscious decision on August 27th not to sit in at Woolworth because of the activity that was happening in in uh, him in Park that morning, an activity that foretold and port did uh, 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 project violence, violent possibilities. We went to Grant's, which was on the corner of um, Adams and uh, Main Street. And we sat in there, and then, of course, the crowd found where the sit-ins were that day and where we were that day, and then went from him in Park to, to Grant's after us. And uh, Nat Glover, you were uh, not participating in the sit-in, but you uh, became involved in a way uh, that, that it kind of was an important event in your life. Yeah, uh, one could make the case I was an innocent bystander. Right. I uh, actually uh, happened to be uh, working at Morrison Cafeteria at the time, um, youngster with a weekend job, and um, I um, uh, was getting off of, of work. And um, uh, of course, this was after the uh, the, the sit-in demonstration and all the the, the uh, turmoil that was surrounding that. And I just happened to walk out late. Interestingly, um, um, the uh, managers at Morrison Cafeteria had come around earlier, uh, probably when the um, the turmoil was going on and and um, pretty much closed the cafeteria and said uh, everybody can go home and um, people just stopped where they were and left and went home for two reasons of course mm -hmm. certainly the turmoil but in addition to that uh, we were going to get paid for the day but they were closing up because they had to come to work but um, but my job was to um, make certain everything was in order before we left floor was mopped and and, um, tr and, and tables clean and that kind of thing. So I stayed around maybe an hour or two uh, after t um, everybody had gone. And, and when I walked out, I walked into uh, the mob out there. And, and, and uh, I, I noticed um, people say there were baseball bats and axe handles. Uh, I didn't see anything but axe handles. And it was, it was it's ironic that uh, <coughs> most of the axe handles I saw, well, they seem to have been new axe handles. And so uh, you, you had uh, a very important, in your life, encounter with a police officer. Well, yeah, uh, um, when, when I um, walked out, uh, my path to, to, to get home was, was through um, those um, uh, men who had pretty much surrounded um, Woolworth and, 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 and Grant, and, and some of them were standing in front of him and Park. And of course, when I crossed the street, they encircled me and, and made a few comments. And uh, actually, in a kind of a menacing way, was uh, prodding and hitting me with the uh, axe handles. It's not in a, um, um, a way to hurt me or uh, anything. And, and, 
and a police officer was standing probably uh, 20 feet uh, from me, and um, he was just watching. And of course, I felt a little secure because he was there, but when it was apparent that he was not going to help me, um, I ran to him, and what he told me, uh, you better get out of here before they kill you. And, um, and I ran home, and, and I, I can remember going home and crying um, because um, at that time, in that era, um, it wasn't because I was hurt. Uh, uh, it was this whole notion of having to run away from a fight. And you didn't run away from a fight at that time. I mean, you would take a beating before you ran away from a fight. And, and uh, my feelings were so hurt. I was so embarrassed by that. And, and, and um, that was a hurtful thing. Well, Rodney, the, um, the police were, uh, I, I don't know, how, how would you describe their attitude and their mission? We didn't see any police during the sit-ins. Um, when you figure that um, on August 13th, Saturday, at Woolworth, through the rest of the week, even when Richard Parker uh, was, could, could have been attacked, and we think that we, we all felt that he would have been attacked, we never saw any um, uniformed police during the entire time. We didn't see any police the day that we walked out of Grants, August 27th, that Saturday. Um, in a very interesting conversation we had with Mayor Burns afterwards as to, uh, and when he criticized us and we criticized him in terms of the police because at that time the mayor was in charge of law enforcement mm -hmm. in, in Jacksonville. So even when he, he gave an account of where different policemen were, there was still some policemen that he could not make an account for, could not give an account for. Uh, so that was, that was a very interesting conversation. What is also very interesting for the upcoming commemoration that we have, we have found some original film footage of Axe Handle Saturday that we will show during those four days that I had never seen before, interviews I had never seen before, but uh, for the first time, folk will see men walking down Laura Street with axe handles in their hands. But do you think police knew there was uh, they trouble had to. afoot? And they had to. The, um, and as, as Nat says, uh, they were keeping people, uh, they had kind of sealed off downtown. Yeah, after, after the melee and after we were attacked and after the rioting began and, and some blacks started making their way to downtown Jacksonville to, to help the youth council members, as they say. Uh, then they blocked off downtown. Um, the, the interesting thing, um, 10 years ago, I met a guy who was the FBI in, an FBI informant with the Klan who wrote up a report for his FBI handler and gave that information to the sheriff at that time, uh, Dale Carson, who was out of town that Saturday. Uh, we later found out that the report was intercepted by a lieutenant with the Klan who was on Dale Carson's staff. Uh, so the Klan had a meeting in downtown Jacksonville at the Mayflower Hotel the Thursday prior to the riot that Saturday. So if there was any intelligence at all, if there was any undercover operations at all, it was not like it was a clandestine uh, sit-in. Uh, mobs were behind us every day when the lunch counters were closed, shouting the uh, usual or, as you can imagine, racial epithets uh, on a daily basis. So it was not as if the potential for violence was not there. And uh, Nat, you. Uh this would have been not a very positive uh, encounter with a police officer, and yet, subsequently, you chose law enforcement as a career. Oh, yeah, I think um, I think um, that unfortunate incident, as well as others uh, experiences that um, I have had uh, with police officers in the neighborhood that I grew up with, 
kind of shaped my um, philosophical approach to uh, law enforcement. I don't think um, any of those uh, instances, uh, any of those police officers would have ever predict that I would uh, not only come back as a police officer, but eventually um, be elected sheriff. Nor would you have predicted No, 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 what I have pre pre yeah. predicted. You know, the interesting thing about this whole um, Axe Handle Saturday thing, um, and, uh, and Harry, you can remember this day, you were there when um, I was giving a, a presentation at one of the schools, and, uh, on, and it was a neighborhood meeting, it was at night, and um, after the presentation, uh, a gentleman came up and, um, and asked if he could speak to me. And, um, and, I, and I certainly said, sure, but, but as you remember, uh, he had to wait a while because we had a number of people to entertain after that meeting. But he stood there for about 35 minutes and waited. And, um, and after uh, we, we finished, he walked up and, um, and, and, and asked me for, um, uh, if I would um, accept his apology. And um, and I said, I'll be glad to accept your apology if you tell me uh, what are you apologizing for. He said he was there on X Handle Saturday, and he was he was begging my pardon. Now, um, one could have said that was orchestrated. One could have said it was a joke. But if you remember, the <clears throat> man was uh, actually uh, crying and um, uh, visible tears running down his face and um, asking for my forgiveness, and, and, um, and of course I did that. And we don't know whether he was wielding an axe handle, but he was there and he was, uh, he was apologizing. In retrospect, <laughs> I wish I had asked him uh, exactly what role he played. Uh, I assume that uh, when I left there, he was one of those who encircled yeah. me. I mean, because, you know, we had some subsequent conversation <laughs> about it, but, um, but, but, but that was not a question that we asked. Rodney, have you had any subsequent encounters with anyone? Uh, well, that I day? have. Uh, um, the film that that uh, we found at UCLA, um, it was interesting that we did recognize some some policemen uh, there. W there are a couple of names, and the names could be could be coincidental, but a couple of the names that we found were were names that uh, that I remembered in recent years. Um, other than other than the FBI informant, I never had anyone to come up and say I did this or did that. And no one who's come full circle and no. said uh, I regret what no. I did in no. 1960. No. Well, you know, you've had uh, in the course of uh, since the publishing of the book and presentations I've made, you've had people come up and say different things about mm -hmm. where they were philosophically and where their head was and where their mental processes were here in Jacksonville during that time, but no one came up to take the credit or the blame for whatever happened. Yeah. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, what's happened in the ensuing 50 years. Uh, we'll take a break now and we'll be right back. Stay with us. <laughs> 